Okay, here's the Unit 2 exam review. We did Unit 1 in about 21 minutes. I'm going to try and do this one in about 20 minutes. That way we can try and get through all three units in about an hour. So my whole goal here is to get through the whole course in an hour. Okay, so let's get started with Unit 2 here. Unit 2 is on quadratics. And we started off quadratics with Chapter 4 where we learned about vertex form and factored form. Here's vertex form and factored form. Study them, know them, know how to use them. <coughs> okay, so remember, we'll start with vertex form here. A vertex form is useful because we can pull up the vertex nice and easily. The vertex is h, k, h, k. The axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex, x equals h. Because I know the axis of symmetry um, divides the parabola in half, I know the vertex is in, is in the middle of the parabola, so that means the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. That means um, the x-coordinate of the vertex is the axis of symmetry. Awesome. Okay. So what do A, H, and K do? When those values change, what happens to the look of the parabola? Well, I remember. A is responsible for the direction of opening. Direction of opening of a parabola. And it's also responsible for um, vertically stretching or compressing the parabola. Stretching or compressing. Okay. If A is positive, the parabola opens up. If A is negative, it opens down. If A is between negative 1 and 1, it is vertically compressed. If A is greater than 1 or less than negative 1, it is vertically stretched. Okay. What is H responsible for? That's responsible for the horizontal shift. It moves the parabola left or right. If H is positive, it moves right. If H is negative, it moves left. K is responsible for the vertical shift. Okay. If K is positive, it moves up. If K is negative, it moves down. Okay, so remember with H, I said H is the horizontal shift. If H is positive, it moves right. If H is negative, it moves left. Just be wary. Um, if we have, um, if you see X minus 3 squared, remember that our H value is actually 3 because our equation is X minus H. So if you see X minus 3 squared, our H value is actually positive 3, which means that it moves to the right. If you see X plus 3 squared, that means our H value is actually negative 3, meaning the problem moves left 3. Okay, because if you see x plus 3, that means our h is negative 3 because it would have been x minus negative 3, which would make it appear positive. Okay, so your h is actually always opposite what you see it inside the brackets. Okay, so if I have this equation here, y equals 3 times x plus 20 squared minus 15, I recognize that's in vertex form. Um, I know my a is 3, h opposite of what I see, so it's actually negative 20, and my k value is negative 15. Okay, um, from there I can easily pull up my vertex. Okay, my vertex is hk, so my vertex is negative 20, negative 15. No problem. My axis of symmetry, I know is x equals h, um, is x equals negative 20. I know my axis of symmetry is the x squared in my vertex. Okay, and I can describe the transformation compared to y equals x squared, so I know what a, h, and k do. Um, a, um, it shifts the parabola, I'm oh, sorry, it doesn't shift it, A stretches or compresses um, the, the parabola. Okay, so if A is 3, that vertically stretches the parabola by 3, because if A is greater than 1 or less than negative 1, it stretches it. So vertically stretch by 3. H is negative 20, that, mean, that means it shifts left 20, because I know if H is negative, it moves left. Left, good. And k is negative, so that means it moves down 15. Okay. Um, if a was negative, that I would have to write that it's been reflected in the x-axis. That means flipped upside down. But a is positive, so I don't have to write anything. Okay. Because our, our the graph we're comparing it to y equals x squared is also is also opening up, so we don't have it's, it hasn't been changed at all from that. Okay. Write the equation of the graph based on the description of the transformation. So we're going to go the opposite way. Okay, so I'm given the description. It's vertically compressed by a factor of 1 over 5. I know that means my a is 1 over 5. Shifted 3 right. So I know my h is positive because it's moved to the right. And 1 down. That means my k is negative because it goes down. Okay, and it doesn't say that it's been reflected on the x-axis. So that it hasn't been flipped upside down. So that means my a value is still positive. So just plug all of these letters into my equation. I get y equals 1 over 5 x minus h, which is 3 squared, plus k, which is negative 1, so plus negative 1, uh, plus and a minus the other, make it minus, so I have minus 1. There's the equation of my problem. No problem. Let's keep going. Um, here's one of the charts you'll have to fill out some information for for a problem in vertex form. One of these is on your exam. Make sure you know how to do it. Okay, vertex is hk, 1, 8. Okay, remember, oh, sorry, 1, 8. Okay. Um, 
Remember, h is always opposite of what you see. I see a negative 1, but I know my h is actually positive 1 because my equation, um, if I remember, is a times x minus h. That means my h is actually 1 here. 1, 8 is my vertex. Axis of symmetry is x equals h. h is 1, no problem. Structure compression, um, a is between negative 1 and 1. That means it's being compressed by a half because my a value is a half here. Um, it's a negative a half, actually, which means it is opening down. I remember if a is negative, it opens down. That is x may take. Um, x, there's an infinite domain for these parabolas. Okay? Um, that is x may take. Um, x can be any real number. Because if I draw a parabola, okay, it's going to continue. I should draw one facing up so you can see here. If I draw this up, if I continue drawing this forever, it would get infinitely wide. This probably will get infinitely wide. It will cover the entire domain. Okay? So x can be any real number. Um, the way a parabola is limited, though, um, this parabola opens down, so this parabola will never go above this point. It will never go above the y coordinate of the vertex. So that means y will always be less than or equal to 8. Okay? Well, let's keep going. If I want to graph this parabola, okay, I know the vertex. I can pull it out. hk, 1, 8. So my vertex is at 1, 8. 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. No problem. Okay, if I want to graph this accurately, I need to know what it looks like to the left and to the right of the vertex. I know the vertex is in the middle, but I need to know what it looks like to the left and right. So when x go, when I go to the left, x goes to 0. When I go to the right, it goes to 2. I need to figure out what it looks on either side of that vertex. Well, if x is 0, plug in 0 for x right here and solve the equation for y. So I'd have a half times 0 minus 1 squared. 0 minus 1 squared. 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Squared is 1. Negative a half times 1 is negative a half plus 8, 7 and a half. Okay, so when x is at 0, y is at 7.5. And, and I know parabolas are symmetrical, so that means when I go, if I go one to the left, y is 7.5, one to the right, y should also be 7.5. Okay, plug 2 into your equation and make sure that works. So plug 2 in for x, and you'd get 7.5 again. Sketch your parabola. If you want it to be more accurate, you'd find more points to the left and right. Okay, but it's going to continue on. It's going to look, you know, something close to that, okay, that's not 100% accurate, you'd have to find some more points to get it looking more accurate and find the exact um, shape of it, okay, but roughly that's how that problem would look, good, okay, factored form, so that's it for vertex form, let's remember factored form, factored form is y equals a times x minus r times x minus s, okay, so if I want to find the x-intercepts, I'm just going to use this graph as a reference, x-intercepts, that means where it goes through the x-axis, I know every point on the x-axis has a y-coordinate of zero, Okay, they're all on the x-axis, hasn't gone up or down at all. So that means if I want to find the x-intercepts, I can set y to equal 0. Okay, okay, set y equal to 0. Okay, now based on the zero product rule, if I have three factors here, um, for the factors um, to multiply to give 0, um, at least one or all of these factors has to equal 0. Okay, I have something times something times something equals 0. One of those somethings has to be 0. Okay, so if 2x minus 3 is 0, if 2x minus 3 is 0, this product of these factors would equal 0. So if 2x minus 3 equals 0, that means x is 3 over 2. Okay, so if x is 3 over 2, that's one of the x-intercepts. It'll be, um, if x is 3 over 2, it'll set this equal to 0, which will make this product go to 0. Okay, so that's one point on the graph where the parabola will go through the x-axis at 3 over 2, so at 1 and a half. Also, if x minus 2 is equal to 0, um, it would make the product go to 0. So if x minus 2 equals 0, x equals 2. There's the other x-intercept. You can see why parabolas might have two x-intercepts. Okay. So those are my two x-intercepts. Those are the two values for x, which would make this product go to 0. So those are my x-intercepts. Good. If I want to sketch the graph of a problem, if I'm given it in factored form, okay, I need to first find the x-intercepts. So find the x-intercepts of y equals 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 7. I know where it crosses the x-axis, there'll be a y value of 0, so set y to 0. 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 7. Based on the zero product rule, I know for the product of these factors to be 0, one or all of the factors has to be equal to 0. So x plus 1 could be 0 if x was negative 1. There's one x-intercept. And x minus 7 could be equal to 0 if x is equal to 7. So if x is negative 1 or 7, that would make this product go to 0. So those are my two x-intercepts, negative 1 and 7. Second of all, so I remember my x-intercepts are r and s. There's my r and my s. Okay. Um, second of all, if I want to find my axis of symmetry, I know my axis of symmetry goes to the middle of the parabola. 
Okay, so if I want to find the axis of symmetry, I can just find the middle of the x-intercepts because that will find me the middle of the problem. So my axis of symmetry is x equals r plus s divided by 2. Okay, so x equals negative 1 plus 7 over 2. Negative 1 plus 7 is 6. Divided by 2 is 3. So x equals 3 is my axis of symmetry there. Okay, so I have my axis of symmetry. I can now easily find, um, so my, I, oh, sorry, I have to, again, remember my axis of symmetry is the x coordinate of my vertex because the axis of symmetry goes through the vertex. It's the vertical line through the vertex. So that is the x coordinate of my vertex. So if I know x is 3, I can find the y coordinate of my vertex just by plugging in 3 for x into my equation. So y equals 2 times 3 plus 1 times 3 minus 7. Solve. Q times 4 times negative 4. That gives me negative 32. My vertex is at 3, negative 32. Okay? To fit this onto my graph, I have to change my scale a bit. My vertex is at 3, negative 32. I'll go down by 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, negative 32. There's my vertex, 3, negative 32. I remember my x-intercepts are at negative 1 and 7. Negative 1 and 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, connect those, make it look like a parabola. There we go, there's that parabola looks like. Good. <coughs> Next, what we're gonna do <coughs> is go the other way, okay? So if I'm given the graph, write the equation. So based on my graph here, what I have to do, here's the steps here, pause the video here, review the steps, okay? Now I'm gonna go through them. So I first need to find my x-intercepts. My x-intercepts are where it crosses the x-axis, so that's at zero. 0, and at 6, 0, okay? <coughs> so um, I remember my x-intercepts are my r and my s. Ooh, there we go, are my r and my s values for my factored form equation of a times x minus r times x minus s, right there. Um, in order to write the equation, I'm also going to need another point on the problem. So find a nice even point. I'm going to use the vertex in this case. It doesn't have to be the vertex, um, but that's at 3, 3. Okay, that's going to be my x, y. Okay, so I have my r, s, x, and y. So I have r and s, x, and y. The only thing I don't have is a, but I can plug everything in and solve for a. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I'm going to need another page here. Okay, so I have x, y, r, and s. So I'm going to plug all of that into y equals a times x minus r times x minus s, and solve for a, and then I can write the equation. Okay, so 3 equals a, 3 minus r, which is 0, so 3 minus 0, times 3 minus s, which is 6. Okay, so 3 equals a times 3 times negative 3. 3 equals um, a times negative 9, so negative 9a I'll write it as. Get a by itself, divide the negative 9 over, a equals negative a third, but I put it in the lowest terms. Okay, so my final equation, plug in for everything except for x and y, y equals negative 1 over 3, x minus 0, which is just x, x minus s, which is 6. So x minus 6. <coughs> so there's the equation of that problem right there. All right, let's keep going. 